the most interesting people I've met in Jacksonville ever, but certainly in the last two or three months. And he is a world-renowned nicer, right here in our own backyard. One of the best LASIK and one of the best cataract sur surgeons you will ever meet in your life. Uh, he also is the best dressed man. Yeah. <laughs> and he designed his own suit. Uh, I wrote a newspaper column about him where I compared him to Ted Williams. And that's, in my mind, about as high a praise as I can give. <laughs> so without further ado, like Dr. Arun Jalani. First of all, let me begin by thanking Scott uh, for the invite, uh, Jennifer for all the hard work you do behind the scenes. And, uh, it's a real pleasure to be here at the Cultural Center. I've never been here before. It's beautiful, really. So another thing I liked, Scott, about your talk was how you went uh, beyond the finance into the real is more of it, which is when you talk about those talks a bit, but it's a mindset. Um, on the same echo, if I may start my presentation here, it's my passion that everybody see beyond 2020. I was lucky to be born with 2010 vision, which is two lines better than 2020, so I've never accepted 2020 as perfect. Of course, this is not a guarantee, but I believe every eye surgeon, as I teach all over the world, should strive for 2020 and better. That's it, everybody deserves it, period. So that's my desire, and the year is 2020, but uh, in 2010, I had said 2010 should be our desire. It's been my privilege, majority of my patients are surgeons uh, from all over the world. Again, these are most of the local doctors, uh, all amazing people, Buster Browning, all these people I'm sure you know. Uh, it's been a real privilege being a surgeon to the surgeons, and uh, it's a pleasure to see them thrive in their vision. Uh, all of you have heard things I'm sure that are called not a candidate. How many of you have heard such a word? Not a candidate. Any of you? <laughs> Lovely. Now what does that mean? Scott? Uh, that they don't think that you have a good opportunity to succeed in the surgery, to improve your vision. Fine. And what does that mean really? <laughs> what it really means is, most usually the doctor is talking about one surgery and you did not fit the bill. To me, that never makes sense. There are 48 techniques to help people see without glasses. Over 20 techniques of LASIK surgery that you've heard about. So the surgery can be designed to you, right? So just like we have here, phenomenal what I just heard from you, Scott, it's about uh, the line matching you do with the food. There's no such thing as there is no line that you match the food. It just shows you have to have it. It's just your knowledge level. Am I right? So what she taught me was amazing here, how she pairs things with things. So to me, over 23 LASIK surgeries, 14 cataract surgeries, nine lens technologies, there are actually 35 technologies available. Uh, patients with previous surgery, a lot of this was done in Russia, veil keratotomy before LASIK, the blade cuts. Dry eye, cross-linking. There are unlimited permutations and combinations to make people see. Uh, of course, surgery, as you can see here, we have already progressed to a stage of no cut technique, which you will see, that's the laser shaping the cornea, as you can see there, making a shape of perfect basketball. And that's the Nikki, that's the Nikki Kimbleton of Channel 4. We did a surgery recently. And uh, is this not sound? Can you hear? Yes. Can you hear? And these are techniques without cutting, no blades. This will be having pizza with my patient right out of surgery. I do these things. Uh, so it's a pleasure always. Uh, quite a few of my patients are here today. It's a privilege for me that the trust you'll have given, the confidence which allows me to keep going forward in my endeavor. So what is 2020? Anybody? <coughs> To me, this is a caveman way of measuring vision. When I speak on the world stage, I say I make race cars for a living, you make me measure the speed with the sundown. That's what these numbers are, 20, 20, 20, 20, it's caveman language. Look at the language. If your visual acuity is determined 20, 20, you see at 20 feet what a normal patient sees at 20 feet. How caveman is that? How far are you standing? Oh wow, this is amazing. So that's how backwards this is. So in our uh, institute, we already measure vision at so many levels, right? From vision to contrast sensitivity, to color vision, to fusion, stereopsis, meaning 3D. That's your vision. So many of you think you have 20-20 when you go to a doctor's office and they quickly do your glasses, right? But then you go out at night driving, you're not confident. So that's your contrast sensitivity. 
If you're looking at things in 3D, you're trying to do things in perfect 3D, you can't, that's your fusion. So vision has to be beyond these organizations, but I'll just share with you so you know for your knowledge what these things mean. Now, this is the cornea, the anatomy. Cornea, the front viewfinder of the eye, the lens in the eye that with age becomes cloudy, that's called a cataract later. That's our retina, which is the film of the camera. That's your basic anatomy. Now, when we're nearsighted, we see things up close, not things in the far, because the eyeball is longer than normal, so the image is formed in front of the retina. Many people are nearsighted, right? Far-sighted people can see things far, cannot see things up close and intermediate. And then, there is astigmatism. Everybody knows astigmatism, right? <coughs> when your cornea is shaped like a football as opposed to a basketball, you have astigmatism. All these are refractive errors. And here's my concept. I call it the three T system, technology, technique, and target. How many of you have heard of this? Your friend went for a quick lacing, had it on a Saturday, and wow, I'm seeing so great. How many of you have heard that? Lovely. Now, what really happened when you hear that? I went for a drive through burger. It was amazing. That's what I mean. One, you don't know there are things better than a burger. Two, you went through a drive through so imagine what happened there inside. And three, you're never going to see that cook ever. You understand where I'm going here? So there has to be planning, technology, technique, target. What kind of job do you do? A lot of attorneys, a lot of surgeons I work on, what's their description of this desire for vision? What's their lifestyle? Can we design vision? That's the sense. Can we design vision to the best of your ability? Target. Are you somebody who has monovision? Anybody here? Monovision, one eye distant, one eye near. Are you blend vision, multifocal, progressive, modified mono, pseudo accommodative? There are so many ways we see. Our brain is amazing. Scott just told you about going to the moon. We haven't explored our brain yet. It's amazing. How many of you have dreamed in full color? With your eyes closed? Can anyone explain to me hi? How? Come to you, right? Amazing, right? Eyes are closed. Can you see me in full color? Yes. Yeah. Yes, they are. Yes, but they're data collecting cameras. Not cameras that can understand what they saw. They have to go to the processor, the CPU. That's what's seen. All right? So technology, all this is available uh, at our institute where we lead the world. We always have technology way ahead of even its approval sometime or availability elsewhere. And to me, it's a pleasure to provide this because then you're really designing vision. So if you see this, I call it vision a la carte. Very simple. When you go to a restaurant where you have a master chef and you are really knowing what you need, including the ingredients, the pleasure is for you and the master chef because you understand the artistry, right? How would you like someone just comes and drinks the wine and doesn't know what, what happened? <laughs> it, it works both ways, right? It's like, do you appreciate that was the only wine that I brought from Chile? Like, no, nobody knows. So important that they understand. So you look at your dry eyes, cornea, cataract, implants, there are so many ways to match and bring your vision together. Another thing, I do not like people calling themselves just LASIK surgeon or just cataract surgeon. You have to be it all. Otherwise, how do you know how you're fixing the camera? How many of you have heard this? I have LASIK and now I can see at 40. Correct? Or I have cataract but I had LASIK before and no one wants to do my cataract. Should not be. You should be able to be a master chef over. I can't just know a burger and a burrito. You cannot do that. Can't be only two. So you must know the whole spectrum to be able to go back and forth in the camera. Again, besides technology, what I love is the passion for my patients. They come from all over the world. How can I make it personal for them? So again, very unlike any other practice I know because I hear it from our patients. This is a regular day in my office where we have fun. Patients go on Facebook and post them. Again, some of them are right here. Uh, it's an honor, all of you. Now, decision making. This is the most important thing. Kathleen, we have an amazing person here, amazing real estate guru in Panavidra, Kathleen Florian. Location, 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 right Kathleen? <laughs> surgeon, 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 nothing else matters, please. Nothing else matters. Please do not fall for technology, never fall for pricing. Here's what I say. Blindness at any deal is not a great bargain. So, because over 70% of my practice is second opinion and fixing complications of LASIK and cataract surgery, biggest issue always has been the advertising or the pricing. 
always open, be crystal clear, it's your eye. You don't get a chance to get it. So very important thing. So this is the most important thing to look at. Then you look at the other thing, last thing, see what I've written here, right? And when people say they're the first, how oh, they qualify that question? Ask them, first where? In your zip code, in your state, country world, that's the ascending order you want. Everybody okay? Yeah? You just look through the pipe, that's all. Not a candidate. These are the conditions where people are told they're not a candidate. How many of you have heard this? Thin cornea, dry eyes, high astigmatism, cornea scars, previous surgery. We had previous LASIK, you can say it didn't work, right? High errors, keratoconus. All these are conditions where people are told they're not a candidate. But again, all they're saying is, I can't do LASIK on you. But LASIK is just one. There are other 40 plus techniques designed for me. Right, so LASIK complications are also possible. We were just in national news a few weeks ago, but this can be corrected in 2020, nearly all of them. But here's where patients are still extremely depressed because doctors are not able to correct their own complications. It's very important. Over nearly 30 years now, actually, 2020 will be 30 years since I did my first eye surgery. That's Dr. Ignacio Barraker from South America, uh, no more, uh, amazing. 16 plus years ago, he invented LASIK. He used to cut a flap in his operating room, take that flap in his car to his house in a garage, cut it on a lathe and shape it, bring it back and stitch it on, three hours, which is today three minute surgery. Wow. Next year LASIK is what I've invented over two, over two decades now. My desire to take LASIK to no blades, no cuts, no flaps. This is what we specialize in. Susanna, you had it. When you came from Germany, 2008, if I remember, right? Yes. Michelle, you corrected your cataract surgery, I remember, with this place. So no cutting, no blades. Which is the most, most complications in LASIK are heard because of the cut. Over 90 plus percentage is because of cut. This is a 3D surgery. We did one of the first in the world 12 years ago. You don't even need the microscope anymore. You can move around. You see the whole eye like a Grand Canyon, 3D, and you're operating. This is surgery where we go beyond your nearsighted, farsighted, and astigmatism. You are looking at what we call wave fronts or thumbprints. You're even correcting the mole hills, not just the mountains. And that's why these patients see better than 2020. Because they're leaving imperfections. Now, the patients are not complaining of doctors who take them to 2020 because they came from horrible to good. But what if that suit was custom tailored to you? Big difference. Patients with periods of keratotomy, very, very common, done 30 years ago before LASIK. All these patients are now flying over because few people are able to correct these cuts. Dry eyes, many of you, especially women, after 35, a lot of dryness in the eyes. They are given drugs to go home with, completely wrong. There are treatment patterns for it. We call it the moist therapy, depending on the kind of dry eye. There are three layers, actually four, but three important layers of the tears. So you have to first pick and decide which layer is affected then attack that layer. The dry eye also is a science. Patients who are not a candidate, you can even do these surgeries that in spite of latent, other than LASIK, you can put a contact lens inside the eye, permanently. Look at that. Going inside the eye, permanently, cannot see it, cannot feel it, it's inside. For very nearsighted people. That's the contact lens, that was the size of the lens. Another surgery, very important to me is, making people's <coughs> eyes look absolutely sparkling white. You know people, especially in Florida, the eyes go yellowish red, it's called a pterygium. The surgery we devised and actually written a textbook on for eye surgeons, we use a human placenta after removing the thing and put a glue without stitches. These patients are sparkling white eyes, fresh looking eyes, and they're back to life. Respiopia, how many of you wear eating glasses? There you go. Ten. Creepy little thing that creeps up on you, right? <laughs> that's presbyopia, that's the condition. That's condition. These are patients where you can do these refractive lens exchange techniques, where you change their lens, which became so horrible to read. And these are surgeries that are done. Give the voice up to you. Based on the use of a controlled release of So you can see this surgery being used to correct reading glasses. About five minutes, you're changing the shape of the cornea. The temperature. And if you can see here, the cornea is gently reshaped. I'm talking to the patient as we're doing the surgery, if you heard it. This is important because what I'm going to show you next is the surgical facility itself. 
where patients are not taking anesthesia because so comfortable and calm for them, they're talking as they're operating on them. Cataracts, how many have thought about cataracts? Very good. So cataract is nothing more than the cloudiness of your natural lens, which goes diamond clear. All of us, as we cross the age of 50, age 60, we will have gray hair and cataracts guaranteed. All right? So the lens becomes cloudy, so it needs to come out. Now because it was a lens, it needs to be replaced. So there's one of my favorites, uh, Dr. Browning, right there. Uh, that's how we can actually see the cataract in a person's eye with technology using transfer photography. Meaning, if you heard of cataract, or if your parents have it, you may have heard the word, it's early. It's just starting. Let it get mature. No, completely wrong. If it's there, it needs to be corrected and make the patient see, and they're done forever. So you can even take away patient's glasses while doing cataract surgery. So after so many years, after 60 years, they're finally seeing without glasses. And I call, cataract surgery, by the way, is the most common procedure in entire medicine. Are you aware of this? No. Entire medicine, millions a year. And they call it routine. The word I hate in medicine since I was a student is so I call it this. Cataract surgery is an opportunity to help patients see the best they can for the rest of their life. Suddenly that makes every eye surgeon very responsible. You cannot belt them out 20 on a conveyor belt and shoot them out on one day. Lens, right? Lens technologies that go in for these surgeries, very important. All these technologies are available to make people see after cataract for distance near and also correct the astigmatism. So surgery itself, again, there's a lot of teaching we do at the institute, and this is again 3D surgery going on for these kind of cases. This was one of the world's first artificial corneal transplants, where, you know, transplants are done, right? Everybody, someone has to die somewhere to give the cornea and the patient can see. But taking it to this level, this was an Australian uh, discovery. Uh, this we used, and in fact, this patient was a Floridian patient, and there we were with the news, and she was seen after all these years and went back to becoming a nurse. Wow. Where is the future going? Just like our cell phones are charging while we are talking. We'll be going to some gas station, something, just charging them for 10 minutes, chatting with somebody, and we're charged up. Our vision's charged, our muscles are charged, and we are ready to roll. That's the future. So already we're working with technology abroad where the lens in your eye will have a battery. Actually, it's already available. A 50 year battery. And you charge it every night on the pillow, or you have a special charger. And as you want your vision, you will have a chip maybe around your face and you will slam it upon, you'll press the chip for near vision, it'll be absolutely perfect for near. Press it for distance, absolutely perfect for distance, for night. That is the future which is already here. So this is the technology, the liquid crystal optic. So imagine your cataract surgery becomes an excuse to escalate your vision for the rest of your life. So instead of going to a doctor where people go, you know what, oh my God, he told me I have cataract. This is unbelievable, I'm like so depressed. We should rather you go at the age of 58 to an AI doctor and go, doc, do I have cataract yet? Can you please design my vision so I can start seeing the world and roaming around now I'm done with everything? Actually, yes. So that's what these technologies bring. So you can see that photo cells there, which happen to be powered, and you can actually power them while sleeping. You see that? Do I get a plug that in? Do I get a plug my head in? No plugging anymore. Anyway. <laughs> Everything Bluetooth. Oh, Everything that's good. Bluetooth. That's good. So I just sleep like a pillow. Then. Exactly. You wake up in the morning and you go, vision's perfect, muscle's perfect, I think, right? By, by afternoon, you're like, all right, someone put me back. <laughs> so that is the future. Absolutely. I mean, if you've seen a measure, um, I do believe in that concept. You know, you walk into a space suit or something, and it tells you whether you're sleepy or you just have fever. Right? So it's going to be so astute and then the treatments are right there. That's medicine. That's the future. We have built the world's most exotic surgical suite. I saw a few, uh, Scott, you've seen it. Um, it's beautiful. And I also, being fashion is such a passion for me, I even change colors based on the occasion. So if it's military, I make it green. Uh, breast cancer, not October, we turn to fuchsia. Uh, blue is my traditional, I love my blue and gold. So the concept everywhere here is, this patient coming out of cataract surgery.
Please note something. Cataract patients, when they come out, they come out on a stretcher. And they're anesthesia. Not knowing what's going on for another few minutes. You saw the patient walking out. That's the future. The whole experience has to be something we are looking forward to. That's the future. And it's already here. So we have the, the world's first eye vision suite where these surgeries are done, patient walking in and out. To me, it's just my passion constantly being fuel to go further. Uh, this is a cataract surgery animation piece. So that's a cataract being broken into pizza pie pieces and sucked out through a small incision. We don't take a stitch. And that's an artificial lens now going in again folded through a small incision. There's no stitching. That's it. You're done. What's the lens made of? What's that, sir? The lens that you're putting in, what is it made out of? The lens, different materials, but polymetal with acrylate, it's like an acrylate. Yeah. This guy's amazing. I'll never forget it. I'll see. See his love? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this is lasers that are being used in CAD right now. So even that, the blade part is gone. It's laser. And you're doing it so precisely, literally going exactly where that patient deserves. Again, you go back to your target technology concept that I shared with you. You're picking technology, target, and technique, everything together. And the patient just sitting there for their master chef meal. Now, if you can see here, oh, that's my patients. They do silly stuff and all, all of that. This is every week, groups of photos of patients, and they all go on Facebook before they fly out. To me, I have never stopped that because I truly love them and some of them are right here. I'm indebted to my patients who have given me so much trust and so much encouragement to keep going. Uh, in this video, if you see here, if you can hear this one, Flew from Abu Dhabi. He's an, uh, he's an amazing guy, a very big consultant for an oil company. Uh, lives in the U.S., but actually lives there. Um, to me, it's very important that these things I can share with other doctors. You are inside their eye. In most cataract cases, the patient is out. But here we are chatting, we are smiling, we are, we are talking, and then they are coming out walking. That's important. That's the future. Does everybody now agree? Yeah. Yes. Yes. That age, people keep asking me, what age can you do? So here's a gentleman, he's 19, and here's a gentleman, 102. As long as your vision is stable, you're a candidate. The doctor is on the line. Now, why after 19? Because just like to stitching a suit for someone, you want to make sure the body is completely grown, the vision is completely stabilized before you do the surgery, right? You don't want to change it, that's all. Of course, this is always our patients. My passion, my other passion. There's passion. So I believe passion has made me more fastidious, more picky about my surgery. I don't like blood. I don't like anything that's not perfect with the eye. Again, being a human, all I can say this is, is my endeavor. That's all. Thank you so much for your attention. Any questions? <laughs> prototype for the cybernetics eye implant that can last 50 years. Yes. How long do you think until that's finished, the 50-year eye plant? Meaning, is it ready, you think? Yeah. It's ready. It's available. Yes. Too few of us, uh, because we work abroad with companies and stuff ahead of time. Right. It's already available, not commercially in the U.S. yet. When do you think it'll be commercially available? A couple years. Cool. Are you Absolutely. looking for investors? Huh? Are you looking for investors? Or are you going to be publicly traded? It will be. I'm not too sure. Five companies. I don't know. Five businesses. Five businesses. So you said there's 
pretty much unlimited combination of yes. uh, procedures. How do you stay abreast? How do you how do you stay up on newest technologies? Oh, great! I'm involved in the innovation myself. Thus, I teach all over the world, so it's a privilege. I get to see industry come and ask questions about should they do it, and then they succeed. So that's a pleasure. But yes, that gives me direction. That also is important uh, ethically. Oh, what's your name? Alex. Alex. Alex, that is also ethically important. If you've seen Dr. Who advertise saying this is the first thing or this is the best thing, the question you have to ask is who told you? But ethically, you're trusting your doctor. So if you have a doctor who's involved in this and says, hey, I know this is best and wait for my dear, it's coming. Now that's the most ethical thing you can do for a patient. Yes. Do you do all the surgeries yourself in the center? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. You have to. Accountability, measurability, that's what I mentioned there. To me, it is very important, especially for eyes, you have to make sure you have done everything yourself from measurement to performance. Yes, yes. I just want to share. I used to work at, in a surgery center 2004, 5, 6, to be perspective. And at that time, we were doing cataract surgery in the surgery center. People would come out and they would have sandbags on either side of their head, were allowed to move, couldn't get up for days. And it was a nightmare for anybody to go through cataract surgery at that time. To see the advances in the procedures, it's just mind boggling to me having been on the other side. So. Yeah, you have been a nurse in a surgical center. Right. Any questions for you? I have one. Yes, yes. So uh, I, 18 or 20 years ago, uh, I was in glasses where I had LASIK surgery, and it was, it was remarkable. The next day, I was able to see the waves crashing on the beach, the alarm clock, and my wife's face, three different levels. At that time, because my age, they told me that eventually I would be reading glasses, which uh, I do a lot of close work, and so now I do have my reading glasses primarily for desk work. Uh, is there a, a projected time when uh, I might want to have the near work uh, work on somebody in my position because at that time they just said oh when you get older you will need glasses and I know that's been 20 years and I haven't kept up with it but you made me think if I do get some cloudiness some days that's something else that we might look at at the same time. My, my answer to you is first of all the answer is yes you should not be wearing glasses that's a straight off statement to you. Um, let me go back a little bit I'm sure the doctor who did your surgery was good, but they did not. What do we talk about? When you do the master shot. It didn't design it to you. Nope. Hear, me, hear me say this now, in conference. I'm gonna give you a burger anyway for lunch, you'll throw up by evening. All right, I'm okay with that. That's wrong. Yeah. Why didn't you think about me 20 years from now, doctor? Are you aware of my clinic for 60? Have you even thought about my cataract? Criminal. So the beauty I just talked to you about was, you came from horrible to good. You don't know any better. Taking, had they taken you to a design 2015 vision and planned your vision for when you were 40 and 60, you should have done today. So coming back to your question, short answer, yes, you can be corrected with previous LASIK that was not done to address your oncoming presbyopia. Because most likely, I'm looking at your eyes, you must have been near sighted with astigmatism. Right? Uh, I could uh, not see distance. That's see what I mean. Looking at your eyes, near sighted with astigmatism, right? So you should have been corrected in that way. But they should have considered also looking at future. Similarly, think about this hazard. If you have LASIK in your 30s, 40s, let's say, right? People are having for reading glasses and stuff. How can you not plan for the oncoming cataract in 18 years? Now when the cataract comes, you're, you're avoiding the patient because you're saying now, I don't know what to do. So that's got a plan now and the patient goes, doctor, what should I do? Well, wait till it gets worse. Right, huh? Sure. So the answer is yes, you can be corrected, absolutely. So what are they doing now? Because you presented the alternative ophthalmology surgery Personally, I would think if you're a surgeon of ophthalmology, this guy 
it's kind of like being a heart surgeon. You need to know everything that's going on with the heart. Everybody's different. And you need to look at all alternatives. So how do you convince the doctors that are doing these surgeons, surgeries to look at that that way as a whole picture? So the question is very well, very well taken there. My question is, are doctors looking at the entire eye and system, John, to plan the surgery to design to you? Am I right? Right. So the answer is both are not. So how do you get them to? I've been trying for 21 years. <laughs> so it's important. Designing. If you're used to wearing a suit off the rack based on height and waist, you have to understand what it feels like to have it measured and done. Right. Similarly for vision. Most people take vision so for granted. They actually are falling for these ads that are saying, come in, you'll be out by lunchtime, whatever, and the doctor sees you just once, and then the assistant sees you next day, and you're done. That is not the right way, so you're right. It must, actually, every doctor must see the patient, understand not only the vision, but also understand the optics of how the brain is functioning with the vision. You gotta remember, what's the organ that sees? The brain. The brain. The CPU is the brain. So what I tell patients is, I'm after your brain. Your eyes are just my excuse to get there. That's, that's the truth, that's the fact. That's why I'm so enamored by beauty of the eyes. I want every eye to look sparkling white. I, I want every eye to be symmetric. No, no stitching. There has to be a drive. It's because the patient deserves it, it's vision. You know, I say this too quite often. If you were on your deathbed and someone came and said, you could have had better vision and six inches of height, what would you do? Six inches? Six inches of height. <laughs> right? So what, what people, my point is, even if someone says you could have had another million dollars before death, it wouldn't mean that much. But could you have been taller and seen better? Everybody wants it. You know, we're going deeper into human psyche. Uh, this is Scott's area, but human psyche. Have you realized no matter what culture people belong to, even those who haven't contacted civilization, they all get excited by the rainbow. Why? Has anyone thought about that? Every human being, no matter what culture, whatever, wherever, in Amazon, deep Amazon, see the rainbow, they all smile. Why? Because it's rarely there. It's what? It's rarely there. Uh, no. Genetically, we are ingrained. We can see the spectrum of the spectrum of color. Yes, but I'm asking a different question. How come everybody reacts in the same way? <laughs> it's really because genetically we are ingrained to love colors, bubbles. Have you seen bubbles? A little kid to an old, whatever. Everybody gets excited with bubbles. So these are important aspects. So vision is such an important aspect that data it sends to your brain within milliseconds controls over 70% of your brain. Just now when I'm talking, you start seeing things and things already happen to you because vision has such a powerful input. Hence, vision should be driven to beyond for insurance in everybody. Even people who had previous surgery, there's no limits there. At least a doctor should try. So in answer to your question, yes, every doctor must look at every aspect of the eye anatomically, optically, and future. So how do you convince them to do that? Good question. So that's where you keep trying. What I do is, my patients, if you see, it's very unusual for a doctor who have this. I'm, I'm amazingly blessed. My patients are all over Facebook. It's very, very risky for a doctor to do that. Doctors usually would be like, okay, here's a Starbucks guy, can you say something nice about it? Our practice is uniquely, completely off track from that, where my patients go and write anything, and they're all over Facebook and social media. I have let that happen at a very high risk to me, because patients write anything. Because honestly, the results are that good, and two, the surgeons who follow me, over 4,000 surgeons on Facebook, whatever, are getting inspired. But if Dr. Khan is sitting with this patient and chatting on a Monday morning, why are we stressed out? Why are we keeping patients waiting for two hours in the waiting room? Why do I come in for one minute into the room and confuse the patient and leave? Why don't I sit down and let the patient hug me and talk about what happened in her life? That's the problem. So the only way we can change. Can you talk to each patient? You don't have some girl do this and some girl do this. Some dentist said, we want you to meet the doctor. He comes in, shakes your hand, and says, I'm going to get you the surgery. And he leaves the room. 
Yeah. You're the man that does it. See, I'm, a, I'm the man that does what I do. When I deal with you in my business, you deal with me. Well, I was building your house, recording your record. You know? We got. We're living in a world today that they advertise this stuff. And you're like, right now, I have good vision. I have bad vision. Sometimes I see perfect. Sometimes I don't. But I see pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I see. Um, but I don't trust these people. Though. I think it's all about the money. Mm -hmm. It's all about turning somebody fast and turning them a machine. So you must. That's why I say you must meet the doctor. My patients are right here. I don't know how much time I spent, Michelle, uh, Kathleen, uh, Susanna. He remembers us. I know all my 28,000 patients by first name. Friends. Well, that's, that's good. Not and, good, necessary. And we have these personal cell too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, the point is not, I'm sure She's of the so doctors. Funny. Huh? I don't get it now. No, I, I'm sure other doctors do a great job, but my point is that this is expected when you're dealing with something like that. Yes. Do you have any more special events coming up, let's say in February? Oh yes, in February uh, 20, Feb 20, uh, we're holding an event called uh, the Gulani Crystal Bowl. And Bowl. where is it? Uh, at, at River Club. Oh, I do Basically, I'll be sharing all, a lot more details about the future of what I believe. And 2020 is a fun. It's not only vision, it's how we all need to be in the coming years. And uh, that's the event that's coming up. This is uh, my wife and Jennifer are involved in that. But uh, that's the next step. And then from there, we want to go and do something very unique in the city. The first eyeball. So that's when I want Jacksonville uh, City to really stand up and all the pearls, I call your pearls, meaning the amazing yeah. people there, we stand up and show everybody. Yes. That's another question. Are, are you mentoring young people? Yes. Yes. And um, that's another passion. We are actually also announcing what is called the iPrentice. Uh, presently, we are adding a vision ambassador to our institute, and we have opened up the gates. Jennifer, you have immediate opening yes. for young, motivated people to learn the business. Yes, and that's also a commitment for me to grow people and give them a career. And uh, again, all of us are privileged in different ways. Can we create opportunities for others? That's all. And uh, given what we have, it's so much fun. I'm thinking we open the vision ambassador position. February will be announcing the iPrentice thing, which is a competition. Yeah, I'm sorry.